So today we are going to talk about how we can ask the C++ compiler to write code for us. We just teach it, teach, tell it what to do once, and then the compiler is going to do it for us for the rest of it. You guys okay? <laughs> You're okay? All right. So we want to we want to teach the compiler how to write code for us, and for that to do that, we need to first come up with uh, like well, like for example, very simple. I'm going to start with a very simple example, show you how it is. Then we're going to take it to more complex and uh, interesting scenarios. Okay, so let's do it like this okay let me just break it up so I'm just gonna bring the utilities to to uh, the utilities class to this um, directory so we can use it. So let's add the utils class over here, add existing item. Please stay here. All right. Okay. Let's say let's say I want to a very the the example that I'm going to give is very childish but bear with me. Pardon me? Oh, somebody from outside is talking to me. Okay. Yeah, actually, let it be. So, so let's say if I want to add two num numbers, I want to write a function that adds two numbers. So I'm going to go int, and I'm going to write sum int a and int b, right? And I'm going to say return a plus b. Okay? Simple, right? So my procedure is to have a function called sum receiving two integers, returning an integer, and return the sum of a plus b, the, the sum of it, the, the outcome of a plus b, that is the sum of a and b. Um, are we good with this? Therefore, in my program, If I have two integers, let's let's call these x and y, just because I, when I say that the name of the variable, I want it to be, and in here I'm going to say a and b. So I have integer a being set to 10 and b set to, I don't know, 20, and I'm going to have c in here. So I can say c is set to sum of a and b. And um, what I say, C out, C over here, it's going to print the value out for me. Anybody have any problem with this beautiful program of mine? No? So now I've written that, I want to say, what if I have something like a double uh, D set to, I don't know, 10.1, uh, E set to 20.2, and I have F over here. I'm going to say F is equal to, I want to have, I want to have F being set to sum of uh, D and E. Obviously, when I do something like this, I'm not going to get an error message, actually. 
it runs perfectly for it. Why it works? I didn't write anything for doubles. What happens? It casts it, right? And I lose those pointies thingy over there. I'm going to get 330.0, so that's not a precise thing. If I want to fix this, I know how to overload it. We know we can do that. So how do I overload? Easy. I'm just going to get this. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. It looks stupid, but please, this is important. I copy the exact same thing because the logic and everything is identical. And I'm going to paste it. Only change the type from int to double. And double. And double. And that recreation of function for me, why did I do that? Because I wrote the sum and it didn't work, so I rebuilt it. I just copied that thing and I said, the logic is identical. All I need to do is to overload the function with new types, right? Not only that, what if I have... What if I have, say, a class called mark? It has a value, and you can show the value. Any problem with that class of mine? Mark has a data, and constructor sets it to something, and it displays it. Couldn't be easier, right? Are we OK with this problem? We're okay, right? Now, what if I have what if I what if I want to have over here mark m set to fifty, n set to thirty, l m n o, and in here I'm gonna say o is set to sum of m and n. Let's make this one p, always very close to thing. Please turn off your cell phones. <laughs> okay, it was mine. <laughs> Sorry. And it was duct cleaner. Do you know how do I know that? Because it has the same three digits. So, so if your number is 416-301-5231, you get a number from 416-301 something else, just to make sure that you answer the phone. OK, let me just. And for those people who are lit watching the video at home, it had nothing to do with what I wanted to do. <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, so when I do something like this, what is the procedure for this? Can I just? Copy this. I'm going to say copy and paste this and simply say over here, mark, mark, and mark. The answer is no, because plus is not defined for mark, right? But what if I actually, what if I actually had that thing in here, the operator plus? Then I could do that, right? So again, as you see, the functions are identical. All I'm doing is changing the types, correct? So ser seriously, if you have a five-year-old kid over here, you can simply tell, copy and paste, change this thing to uh, an employee now, or change these to a salary now, and it's going to work for salary. So the person rewriting the code for this has, there is no need for the person to have any knowledge of C++. Just copy and paste and change the types. And uh, the application works. Are we OK with this? What did I change? I added the plus operator for mark, so it works between the two. I didn't have the plus operator defined. So obviously, because the logic is always the same, you have to have those things followed, right? And obviously, because it's being passed by value, rule of three should be OK with, the, with it. So these things you have to consider. You, can just, you cannot just copy and paste. You need to have the knowledge 
that if I just replicate this, copy it, and change the types, you need to have the knowledge that if the type types are changed, it will work. You can tell someone else who has no knowledge to, to just do the coding for you. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? You can actually do this in C++. So let me actually write the, 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 the mark thingy over here too. So I'm going to have over here C out B, and I'm going to go in out. So, so now when I run the program, well, we'll see that mark is actually being called in three different ways. One for integer, one for double, and one for the mark, right? Now, what I could do was saying, hey, compiler, you see this pattern? This pattern is not a function. It's a template. And what you need, the type name you need to change, the type name you need to change is this. Change me. Okay? And then I get the change me over here and put what I want to be changed to that. Then I don't need to write any function. Let me run it. Voila. So you are essentially telling to the compiler, this is how it's written. If anybody's calling the function sum, see if you can change the types. Like if I make one double, the other one integer, of course, it's not going to work because you have only one change me over here. These have to be identical. You cannot have two different ones, OK, in this scenario. So the compiler looks at the sum. OK, there's a sum, int, int, voila, int, int, int. So it rewrites that code for you. And it keeps going like that. Now if I want to have another sum over here, same thing is going to happen. Sum and double and double. It looks at the pattern and recreates the code for you. So the point that you have to take over here from what I just said is that if I don't have any function calls to sum, if no function calls in my code is made to sum, no binary code will get created for my template. So this is template essentially vanishes at execution as if there is no function sum. The difference between overloading is that you overload for 50 different things. They all get compiled, and all the binary code gets embedded in your executable, but you're not calling them. With a template, it's just in time. It looks at your code. You, oh, you called the sum? Let me create one for you. You did a double? Let me create. So your code expands based on the need you have for your template. Do we understand what happened here? Do, that's templates. Done. This. Of course. That's another point that we have to make. Every template needs to have documentation. So you have to, at the top of the template, say, this template, because it's receiving type by value and returning type by value, copy construction is needed. So you have to, after, so first of all, nobody calls it change me. <laughs> That's for kindergarten. People usually call it type or T, OK? But just to tell you, you can call over here schmiggly dingy if you want to. It doesn't matter as long as it makes sense. And, and lazy people usually put just T over there. So you see T, T, and T. Eh, that'll do too. OK? So in your documentation over here, you have to mention that T requires copy construction. T requires uh, plus operator, binary plus operator. So the person who wants to use my sum template looks at it. Oh, does my function have copy? Is it OK with copying? Yes, good. So that passes that. Do I have a plus operator that defines what is the definition between doing two pluses between this? Yes. So I'm good. I can use this template for it. Are we OK? 
Okay, now, now that we know how it worked out, let me show you how, it, how you actually write templates. So this is how it works, okay? Obviously, sometimes when you're doing... Uh, certain type of, like, mm, let me, let me see if I can give you a good example for it. I'm going to add another class over here. I'm going to call it a container. Okay, so for this container, I'm going to, yeah, on purpose, I'm going to add over here int capacity. Okay, so, and let's set that one to a 250. And uh, something like that. So that's going to be 250. And uh, container data, whatever. And let's say the plus, even I don't have a plus operator here. Okay. And then in here, I'm going to say, um, uh, the sum of two will be, how do I do a sum of two? I want it to not match to that one. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to have over here, uh, uh, container add or, uh, container add in here. I'm going to have, uh, uh, C, uh, container. Uh, C, and let's say in here I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna say M capacity will be plus. Uh, oh, I'm gonna first create a container. So I'm gonna create a container return, and the value of this container will be M data plus uh, M data uh, of the other one. So C dot M data. That's capital C. And then afterwards, I'm going to say ret dot m capacity plus equals c dot m capacity. I'm just coming up with something, people. It's just don't, don't. So I'm going to say, and, and I'm going to put over here a slash, and I'm going to say m capacity. So as you see, this container of mine doesn't have, uh, doesn't have the plus thingy. If I actually write something over here with... So Sorry, I got disconnected for a second. So if I actually write over here something like this, if I say container uh, C10, uh, um, um, what do I call it? Uh, da, 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 container... Uh, no, I cannot see everything. Come on, give me a word. <laughs> um, what do I do? Um, I. Do I have I over there? No. Container I set to 10 and container J set to 200 and K over here. If I say over here K is equal to uh, uh, sum of uh, I and J, obviously. I cannot do this, right? If that's the case, this is not in your, uh, the first one is, the second one is not, I think, in your notes. But take a look at it. If it is, learn it. If not, just have it as information for your 3, 4, 5. First of all, if you overload some to take care of your container, overloads always have priority to, to templates. So if I create over here a sum function in here, so if I create a, a container sum, and in here I have a, a container A and container B, and then in here I would say uh, return uh, A dot add b okay that works too right if i write the sum over here now it works so these three will those work that will work with template and k over here the, the sum with container will work with the the overload are we okay with this so if you have one exception 
that doesn't work with your template, you can still overload it. But there is a problem with the overload. The problem is that it doesn't fit the, the goodness of template, which if you don't do the sum with container, the code vanishes. That's not going to happen here. The code, because it's a function, it's an existing function, it's going to get compiled. You're going to have the binary in your executable. If you want to have it still as a temp template, what you can do, you can write a specialized template for some specifically for this. So instead of overloading, you can say, hey, I'm going to, the sum template you see up there, so instead of overloading, you're going to say, instead of that sum thingy that I have over there, I'm going to write another, what the devil was that? I'm going to write another template, and you leave it empty over here. Then you're going to say container, sum, and container, con about container A and container B. But what you are going to do is to actually tell to the compiler, this sum belongs to the container. So it becomes a specialized, when you don't write the type over here, this becomes a specialized thing only for a container. And this can only be used as if a container is called. The good thing, so it's exactly like the other one. So I can actually write over here, return A, A at B. So it's the same thing. It doesn't make any difference. So I literally did my overload as specialization. What this specialization does is that the difference is that if I don't use the sum for containers, no code will be created for it. That's the only difference. So you, you can write the general template if the logic fits you, if the logic satisfies your need, you write the template and you just use it. But if a specific function comes and you still want to have that template applied to that one or two exceptions, then you can specialize it as follows. So you write template, you write it exactly as if you are writing the function, but you add the signature of the template to the function name, which means this sum is only for container. Are we okay with this? Yes. Overload. The, what is the point of uh, templates? The point of templates is that that logic is going to be used so much in, with different types that I made it a template. Other than that, there is no use for writing templates. It's just crazy. Why do bother? If you are like data structures, like if you are writing an amazing search algorithm that, it, that works very fast, you don't want that only be for integers. You write the exact same app application as uh, the function as a template, so it can run on a variety of different types, correct? Because your search is so amazing and it works with everything, you want it to apply to everything. You change it to a template, OK? What is the advantage for it? Is that if nobody calls your search, your executable will not contain the function, right? But if five different types are used, then five copies of your function will get created by a compiler and added to your executable based on the need. The difference between specialization and overloading is that overloading is always in your code. It always gets compiled. It's not overloads. The overload is called based on need. A template is created based on your need. So essentially, when you create a template, you are asking the compiler to overload that based on your need. That's actually a beautiful way to say it. So to write a template for a function is to ask the compiler to overload the function for you based on function calls. Does that make sense too? Yeah. If you do it like this, you're going to say, I'm going to overload it myself, which it doesn't make sense. Okay? So your choice. For our case, like if you, all, if you really don't know how to do the specialization, then forget it. Just overload and be done with it. Without this? Yeah. yeah but <laughs> so you're saying, I'm just going to write a template only for container as nothing else. And why don't you just write a function? 
<laughs> you know, the whole idea of template is to, to, but of course it works without that one, yeah. It's a template of its own, but it's written for a specific type. Yeah, but a uh, logical mind says that it's a specialization for that because the function name is, is sum and the signature is identical to that one, right? So this is syntax. Let's see how we actually do it. Which brings us to the next thing that I have to tell you. No, first let me let me do the other one and then I'm gonna So we did have uh, in our notes I did I did a dynamic integer array for you guys. Remember that? Uh, or no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's do something else. Let's do something else. I'm going to start with a simple, and then we're going to go with a more complicated one. Where is it? Um, let's remove this. Well, actually, maybe I'm, it's a good idea to have that mark thingy in case I want to do something with it. So let's let the mark be. I'm going to remove the sum. Let's say, let's say I have an array of integers. OK? How many integers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 integers, right? If I want to sort these things, if I want to sort these things into uh, uh, in descending order, for example, what do I do? A simple bubber sort that we have done before is writing void, then right over here say sort. And then uh, I write integer pointer for the array, so that's the array. And then I write uh, integer size because I need to know how many uh, I, I have. And um, uh, I'm going to have an integer i and j over here. And I'm going to say 4, i set to 0, i less than size. This is textbook, right? Uh, um, this, this is, um, you did this in IPC 144. Like, you know, for j set to zero and j uh, less than size minus i minus one and j plus plus. And then after you do this, you're going to say if array j is less than array, oh, array, say j plus one. Then you swap the two, right? Swap array j and array j plus 1. How do we swap it? This is how we swap it. We say void swap between the two. So I'm going to have over here uh, integer pointer 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 a and integer pointer <laughs> pointer B, and I'm going to write over here int temp is set to target of A, target of A is set to target of B, and target of B is set to temp, and that replaces the two thingies, so I swapped it. And then after I do all these things, I want to show my beautiful uh, array over here, so I'm going to say void prn array, and the array that I want to show is an integer array with the size of i and no showing the array is again a straightforward thing so I'm gonna say uh, for integer i 
set to zero, i less than size and i plus plus. If I show a comma, I want them to be comma separated. So that's that. Then I'm going to say C out uh, array i. And then at the end, I'm going to go to new line. Yeah, there you go. So now in my main, I can actually say sort a13. And in here, I can say pr and array a13 and run and yada 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 and I'm gonna have a, a descending sorted array of those 13 things. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now question is what if I what if I have an array of doubles? How do I do that? Okay. If I want to, so now we are going to templates. So this is how you write templates. First, you write it for one type. You make sure everything works perfectly. Then you go every single scope that you have, it accepts a template tag. You put the template tag for it. You change the types of interest, the things that are supposed to change. You change it. You'll notice it because you wrote the code. Um, you change it, and then your program works for everything. For example, in here, I'm going to say the very first thing is swap, right? So I need to swap two things. In here, I'm going to say template type name T. Okay, in here, what do I need to change? This int should change to T. This int should change to T. This int should change to T. Immediately, I have, docu I have to document it. What do I need for temp to support, for T to support, so swap can work? What is the first line over here for you? This is an assignment operator? Assignment at moment of creation is a, it's a copy constructor. So copy constructor is first. So copy constructor, so it should support copy construction. Line 22, what does, it, what does it need? Thank you. Copy assignment, not assignment operator. Copy assignment. Anything else? The arguments are passed by address. They don't need anything. Good, so that's fine. Immediately test it. Don't go for the rest. Because this swap is templated, your sort should still work for this. Okay, so immediately test it, and immediately I run it with the template and see what happens three years later, and it works, right? So I'll go with the next one. So now I have done that one, I'm going to go with, uh, with sorting. In sorting in here, I'm going to go again, template, type name, type, okay? So should I change this to type? Yeah, it's my array that I'm sorting, right? So that's type. Should I change the int for size to type? No, it's number of things. It doesn't matter what type. It's always int. Over here, I have an int. Nothing needed. Nothing needed. It's done. I j All I need to do is to document it. Okay, now to document it. Does this need any special thing about the array? No, it's just an address. We don't care. Integer, integer, integer. I have to see where is array i. I have to go with it. Ah, oh, there you go. What do I need here? What do I need there? Operator? Oh, which operator overload? Less than operator. So you have to, you have to say t must work with operator for comparison. Okay, something like that, okay? All right, so now the, the sort is done too. It's templated. Let's see if it works. We run it. 
and it works perfect. Now printing. I want it to print too. So what do I do for printing? The exact same thing. I'm going to go template, type name, type. And sometimes when you do this, you see if it doesn't work, what do you do? If you see your template is correct, but it doesn't work, what do you do? You specialize it. Okay, remember that. So if you later on use something else with this and see you see it doesn't work, you can specialize it. The logic is the same. Like for example, one, you have something that doesn't have the less than operator overloaded. What do you do? You only take that part and you, you uh, specialize that part. And everything else will work. So you can keep modifying and make it work. So now we have PR and array. So I am printing an array, so that has to be the type. Size remains the same. So what do I need here for? What do I need here? Insertion. In extraction is for reading. I know, I, I'm always confused with that too. It's insertion operator. So, so T must be insertable into O stream. And you're done. Run it one more time. Control F5. And it works. Now I can actually test it with the other one. Now that I have that one, I'm going to come over here and say sort D with size of, what is the size of D? Anybody knows? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's going to be 10. 10, 10, ta-da, right? Are we okay? All right. So, and it works with everything. Like if I have, for example, uh, let's say I have a class that encapsulates a name. We've done that already, right? A, a class that encapsulates a name. If I have that one, and the name of mine is a dynamic thing with all the good stuff that I have. Let me just include, include utils and using namespace namespace stds. Yeah, so my name is holding a dynamic name and it has copy construction, assignment, destruction, everything is set out, operator plus is working for it, operator less than or equal works for it, so everything works for this thing. Can I actually sort series of names with this? And the answer is, it does not make any difference because all the things that you asked for the sort, all the special thing the sort needed to do because they are applied for it, you can simply do the exact same thing with the name, even if it's a complex object, it will work perfectly with absolutely no problem. Ta-da! Okay? So that's the beauty of templates. You write once, you reuse over and over and over for whatever you want. Okay? One catch. And for that catch, we need to talk about how the compiler works. I've talked about it before, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and I don't know if you remember or not. Do you remember how compiler works? One person remembers. Good, I'm happy. Okay, so let me see. Uh, it was, let me see if, it, if it's here, PNG. Such a long time ago, did I, did I hear that right? Yeah, there you go, how compiler works. Actually, let me bring it over here in case we want to copy, 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 copy. And I'm going to add it to today's solution. Add existing item. No, 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 not existing. Well, actually, sure. Let's copy it and then add it. And then I'm going to put it in resource files. It is. Okay. So let's see if it opens it. Yep. Seriously? What's going on? Didn't open it? Hello? Okay. 
Um, apparently that didn't work. Let's try it another way. There you go. So, the command that is executed over here, the command that is executed over here to do the compilation, did I show you this, show this, show this one to you before? I did, right? Just a second. It's gone? No? Coming? I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> okay. All right. So, the command that is executed over here, ladies and gents, is this one. So, in here, it is actually saying, we are saying G++. Oh, this is not that one. Let me get another picture. This is, where did they put that one? Mm. It's okay, but this is not good. Uh, this is this doesn't have name for the function. Let me just let me bring another one. Think that it's like a break or something. Okay, give me a second. I should have it in recent. Let me pause the recording. Zoom and let's talk about it. So the compiler is actually called like this. So it's uh, G plus plus. A dot CPP, B dot A dot CPP, B dot CPP, C dot CPP, and main, main dot CPP. Enter. That's the command that is executed. We okay with that? Okay. So when it, when you issue a compiler command with four files in it like this, the compiler runs four times and it then calls the fifth program. So a total of six, five executables are called separately and independently from each other. Each execution pass has no knowledge of the other execution pass, which means G++ runs for ACPP. So the very first thing that happens is this procedure. The very first thing that happens is this procedure. First, this happens. And compiler has no idea what happened to the rest. Did I clear it? Oh, it became black. Okay. Mm. Set. Okay. That's better. Yeah. So the first pass calls that and runs that. That's what it sees. It sees a.h, a.cpp. If everything goes okay, it creates a.object. Are we okay with this? All right. If and for b.cpp, this is what happens. It only sees b.h, b.cpp, and the result is b.object. Are we okay with this? Now, the next one is the interesting one, and I want your attention. For the third one being that is running, I know th those who remember it, you think you know what I'm about to talk about, that that's not the case. Now the third pass is running. The third pass, what the compiler sees is this. Because in bc.h, b.h is included. Okay? Because of that fact, what compiler sees is that. Does compiler see b.cpp? No. Does it care if the function you implemented here exists or not? No, that's not the job of compiler. Compiler's job is to translate your commands for execution with a correct grammar and syntax. It doesn't have to guarantee the function you ask for actually exists. It just needs to know how to call it. And that's what your prototype provides. Your, pro your prototype is telling the signature is this and that. It accepts two integers and returns a double. So, so that's how the compiler works, right? So it doesn't know what BCPP is. And the same thing with main. When it's actually called like that, so when this is actually called, this is what it sees, and these. So it only, and actually, oh, sorry, 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 and, and, and this one. So these are the things that it sees. 
A.CPP, B.CPP, and C.CPP is not visible to the compiler. After everything is done, Linker guarantees that the promises you made, you kept by providing in the CPP files. That's the fifth executable, the Linker program. Are we okay with this? Because of this fact, your template, who, who reads the template and copies it? It's the compiler. Remember that. So you write the code in the template, compiler looks at it, and regenerates the code for you, correct? Because of this fact, you cannot create a module for a template like you do for regular functions. In regular functions, you put the prototype in a header file, and the body goes into CPP, correct? If you do that with a template, the logic of the function will be hidden from the compiler because it's in the CPP file. During the compilation, CPP doesn't see it. How can it regenerate something that it doesn't see? Because of this fact, templates entirely code, prototype, everything must be in the header file. You cannot put anything in the CPP file. Got it? So a module, the question for final test. I'm going to tell you, we are creating a template for an employee. Tell me the name of the files for the module. If you give me employee.h and employee.cpp, you lost the mark. Because it's a template, it's only employee.h. There is no CPP. Got it? So, knowing this fact, now, if I want to actually create a module, knowing this fact, if I want to actually create a module for my sorting in here, what I need to do is to actually create a header file, not the C++ file, and let's call it sorting dot h and then do all the things that I'm supposed to do, if not define <coughs> SDDS sorting and define. And then in here, I'm going to say namespace SDDS. And then I'll go to my program and grab all the stuff I need to have for my sorting template and I'm going to put it in the header file. And now I can reuse this header file in different places for my sorting. Remember, if you have a prototype of a function and the function body separate in your template, you can do that. If I wanted to, like for example, if I wanted this template to be down here, I could have done this. Crazy, but I can. So I can, I can say, let's say, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, copy. I'm gonna bring this down. So the body is down here, and up here I can just put the 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 the, the prototype. I can do that. There's no problem. There's a prototype for the template, but the body is available in the same header file. Okay, it cannot be somewhere else. Are we okay with this? Okay. So. That's that. Obviously, I'm not going to do it because it's just nuts. I'm going to have them both over there. Why do I need to do that? But anyways, so that's that. So, so now sorting is actually a header file, and I can add it up here as include sorting. And that becomes a, a function header file for the uh, a function template. Uh, that is modularized and I can do sorting with it. Are we okay with this? Okay. So now that we have, well, now that we know how to create templates for functions and all the good stuff, uh, what do we do? Yeah. When we talked about dynamic memory allocation, I created an integer dynamic integer array in class. Remember that? Dynamic integer array? Anybody remember it? A class was, was integer array. I created it. I, I'll bring it. I'll look for it. It's going to be here, I'm sure. So, so let me just... Uh, 
we are section A. So if I search in here, I think I called it int array or something. Int array. Really? That much? There we go. Open file location. So this is what we have. Int array. There you go. Int array CPP and int array uh, header file. Let me just take a look at it first. Let's see if this is the one. Yeah. This is the one. Okay, so let's bring it. I'm going to copy it and bring it to today's note. Okay. And paste. Now, ladies and gents, something that is uh, slightly mentioned in, in the notes, but if you want to have a successful 345, pay attention now. Okay? How do we create, like functions, you can actually make the classes template. I created an integer array before, if you recall, and I'm going to bring them all because I want to convert that to a template. An integer array was designed to only, an integer array was designed to only, yes, to only create an integer array for me so I can use exactly like a regular integer array. It resized itself automatically. It had assignment operator set up. It could be copied. It had index, Boolean, lots of good stuff it had, okay? So instead of using an unsafe integer array that, you could, that I could go out of, the, out of the size, out of the boundary and, and get segmentation fault and problems like that, this fixed that one. I would say, if it's good for an integer, why shouldn't I have such a thing for employees? for cars, for doubles, for characters, for whatever I want. Any type of array that I want to be dynamic, why shouldn't I be able to use it for it? The answer is we can, and we can do it using what we call a template for uh, a dynamic array. So I'm going to right off bat create uh, a, a header file, and I'm going to call it, say, dynamic array dot h. And the dynamic array of dot h of mine, oh, std, what did I do? stds, dynamic array, uh, namespace, stds. And what I will do, I'm going to bring everything that dynamic array has right in here. So I'm going to copy the class. Do I have anything else in here? No. So I'm going to put it right over here. That's the class. Now I'm going to go to dynamic array.cpp. And I'm going to bring everything else. Copy. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay. I want to convert this, I want to convert this to a dynamic array. And let's see if, it can, if we can actually do it, if it works, okay? So uh, first of all, it's not integer array anymore. It's dynamic array for all types. So in here, I'm going to say control H, and I'm going to say int array should change to dynamic array, right? And I'm going to current document, replace all, voila, there we go. So it's dynamic array, not integer array. That's what I'm changing. So for a class, there are, so in the other, in like, let's, let's do it in here. Mm, now here, uh, what we have done with a function, when we create the sorting function, I put a template at the top. So I wrote over here template, and I wrote over here type name, T, right? So this template affects the scope that comes after, everything in here. And I need to change everything that is about an integer array to a type array, so I can make it any type, convert it to any type. 
To do that, I need to follow a specific types of a specific detailed uh, instruction and rules, and everything's going to go smooth. And that's going to happen after five, ten minutes. Okay? So let's go for a break or something. We'll come back and we'll continue with that one. It's not going to take more than 15 minutes. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> All right. Pause. Unlike Unlike functions, classes don't have signatures. When you are writing templates, the compiler looks at the signature of your function. If it matches the template signature, it rewrites it. With a class, there is no signature. Like if I actually want to create like a dynamic type in my main, so um, I, uh, let me just put this one as C dot template, A B dot template. So if in my main I want to seriously, okay, in my main. If I want to create a dynamic array, how do I do that? And I put over here like 50. How do I do that? Because it, it doesn't have a signature. You cannot say, how do we say how to create it? This is how. In classes, you add the, the type you want that class to be made out of to the name of the class. So if I want a dynamic array of integers, you add the signature manually, like you did for a specialization of a function. So you say, I want dynamic array of ints. Therefore, the template will call for an int one and create it. OK? So <clears throat> let me just include that dynamic array two over here, too. So that's how you create it. Now, how do we actually do the conversion? This is how it's done. So the rules that you have, OK? The rules that you have are this. I wrote it over here. I just want to make sure that, that, we, that I don't miss anything. First, obviously, change all the type of the variables or objects, type of, type of the objects of interest to the type name. What does it mean? It means anything that in here is related to what this dynamic array is going to be of. So this is a dynamic array of integers. We have to do that. So first of all, m data obviously changes, right? So this is an int. It becomes t. In here, its size, we, we don't care. Size. This is creating it out of a regular integer or a regular integer array. So that has to be a T. Whoa. That has to be a T. In here, sets it to an integer array with specific size. So that has to be a T. Resizing to new size? No. Size? No. Boolean? No. Oh, it returns an element. So that has to be T. Index has nothing to do with the element. In here, it's returning to, and that's that. So that's that one. First, you change all the types of interest. And because you wrote it, you know which ones are what you want to change. Are we OK down to this point? Number two, because it's a class and it doesn't carry the signature, you have to add the signature to all the class names. So whoa, you. Add the template type, the type name. Uh, 
signature, which is essentially T. Okay, so this is what it means. When I say signature, it means you want to manually set it. So you add that, okay, to all class names. Okay? Except the following. The name of the class right after template. That doesn't get a signature. The next one. The names of the constructors, they don't get it. So the name of a constructor doesn't get it. And finally, the name of the destructor. Other than that, you change everything. So let's do it. Do I add the signature to this? No. It's the class after the template. Do I add, change the name? No, it's the constructor. Do I add this one? No, it's the constructor. Do I add this one? Yes, it's an argument. It's not a name of a constructor, right? If you see, actually, these are all yellow, so you know exactly which one they are, right? Those are the green ones, essentially. So in here, I'm going to add this one, T, to that one. This one, yes, I'll change it. Yes, I'll change it. Yes, I'll change it, and yes, I'll change it. No, I won't change it because it's a destructor. Now I'll come down over here. There is nothing else. My class is all done. I apply all those rules for every single scope that I have. If everything was in line, I didn't need to do anything. I was done. But because it has the functions out there, every single scope over there must be converted. So in here, it's going to be template. Type name T. Now, the first one is, is not at the constructor name. It gets it. The second one is a constructor name. I don't touch it. In here, it creates a new array of type. So that has to be T. Done. That function is done. And you keep going like that for every single thing. Okay? And the result for it would be... The other class, actually somebody asked to actually do it right to the end. So for every single thing, I did it. <laughs> it was a long, long time about doing it, but in here I'm just going to put the uh, final result for it. And we test it. Okay? So, so you, want it to, you want me to do it? Huh? <laughs> I can do it. No? Okay. So as you see, this is all done. And uh, we, did, we didn't have a chance to test it, actually. So now we test it to see if it works or not. <laughs> OK? So just to do, uh, I have to review it to make sure it's done. So this is done. This is done. This is done. 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 Yeah, it's here. Done. Done. And finished. So yeah. So now I have it in this. So I have an error over here. Um, where is the error and what is it about? Oh, I have two namespace SSDs for some reason. Why did I do that? I don't know. I'm not a good copy paster. <laughs> I think this is better. Save. And the sad thing is like I cannot compile this. I have to include it somewhere else and then compile it. That's the template, right? You, you cannot compile a header file. OK? So I have to come over here and actually uh, create an array of uh, uh, 50. Of, I'm going to create a, an. Um, a dynamic array like that. I'm hoping that it works in here. Oh, I had integer array somewhere. Where is it? Um, where is the main we had? There you go. So I'm going to get this integer array. We had 13 of them, right? So copy. It's going to go over here. Now I'm going to say a dot set 
to oh we have two a's <laughs> okay that's lowercase a a dot set i think a and uh, the other one is uh, size that is 13 right then i'm going to say four integer i set to zero i less than um uh, a dot size yes and i plus plus now i'm going to say the exact same thing see out uh, and oh not and l just like that um, i and and then we're going to do what we're going to do uh, c out um, c out uh, ai and c out and l and i think we could uh, convert it in a dynamic array could was it castable to uh did we give access to the raw data We didn't give access to raw data, did we? We should have. So if they cast the integer array to an integer pointer, to a constant integer pointer, they would get the M data. Let's do that. Do I have an operator? I have operator equal, operator equal. Let's do it after. Let's first do this. So uh, now let's see what happens. So. I'm just going to compile and run it, keep our fingers crossed, and see if it's going to work. Um, yeah. What's going on? Oh, I have, uh, uh, where is that? Oh, shoot, don't tell me. Uh, it was in the header file. Darn it. You know what does it mean? All the C out stuff. Oh, this is in sorting. So I didn't do the sorting properly. Sorting, I need to have include IO stream. Sorry, ladies and gents. Include IO stream. And bec because I cannot uh, use the thing, it, it has to be STD and STD because we are in a header file, right? STD and STD. Didn't we compile that one the other time? Uh, let me recompile one more time. Control F7. What is not? Whatever. It's not. It says it's not. Oh, it's a mismatch because this returns an unsigned. That returns a signed. Doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go over here. Unsigned. Okay, let's run it one more time, see if it works or it's going to die on us. Whoa, there you go, it worked. So, <clears throat> so there you go, uh, it worked. Okay, so uh, any questions? They're okay? No one had any question about line 67. Can anybody tell me why did, I, why did it work? Does, does it work? And if you cannot explain, why didn't you ask? And I think I did not resume. Is it still pausing? No, it is. Huh? Of course. Sorting? No, it wasn't sorting. It was just printing. You want to sort it? If you want to sort it, then I have to actually do this. So I have to come over here, say, we need to be able to have operator constant, uh, constant uh, T pointer to overload it to this one, const. Okay, so we need to overload this. So, and in here, seriously, inline? Anyways, so then uh, what I need to do over here, I have to say return uh, const uh, t pointer m data. So that returns the, the array, right? So what I can do now, I can go to my sorting program, right? In sorting program, what I can do is this. Wow, this is crazy. I hope you, you, you enjoy it. So I'm going to say over here, sort. Okay, sort receives the array, right? So in here, I'm going to say A. 
<clears throat> oh, sort. Shoot, it needs non-constant one. Yuck. It needs a non-constant one. So I have to have a non-constant one too. Very bad thing to do, but hey. This one too. Where did I put it? There you go. So this one has to change. So I'm giving, uh, it's a very bad thing I'm doing, people, by the way. I am giving direct access to the raw data of my class. Very bad thing, but just, I, I want to make the sort work. So A and uh, A dot size. And why is sort is not working? Oh, in here, I'm going to say, oh, because it receives that one, so in here I have to say uh, integer pointer. Now it works. So now uh, I'm going to do it again. And it, hopefully this time if I print it, it's going to be okay. Let's see if it works. There we go. Very bad thing. Huh? You want to do a double two? Yeah, sure. How long it takes? It's, this is the double. There you go. Double. And in here, I'm going to have. So let's call that lowercase d. Done. And you write the whole code for the other one. Huh? You want me to do it? Finish it? Seriously? <laughs> okay. How many there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10. i got to get all these things. See, we could have written a template for that. <laughs> okay. So this one's going to be D dot set, D and 10, right? And this is going to be D, D, double, D, 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 D. And I have to bring, oh, how many unsigned I as I have over here? Copy. And I'm going to bring this one up here. If you compile it on uh, GNU, it's possible that's not going to work. I, yeah, I'm just going to remove those. And there we go. Don't tell me. Now do it for name. <laughs> Actually, I can't because that's a different story. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to, why not? So essentially what I did over here, so another, the best, the better way we're, of doing it instead of, add, let me just fix it. But now that you ask, how much time do I have? So I gave access to private property of dynamic directly. That's awful. So I'm going to fix that. What we can do over here instead of doing this, we could specialize sort for the dynamic array of ours. You follow? Okay. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll tell No, no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So, so, so let me think actually. Actually, do we need to? Yes, we do. I, I can make sort work with this one, but then I have to overload the address operator, and that's something that's too rich for our blood. You can overload the address operator, so when the address is extracted, it extracts the, the address of the object. And the, No, no, we're not going to do that. So but what I'm going to do, uh, but, 
Yeah, we could special. So, so let's remove this constant thing. Constant, okay, because we are. I'm giving constant access. This is not right. This is not a good thing to do. So I'm giving access to the raw data, so they can actually destroy everything. I don't want that. So I'll remove that one. So for printing purposes, it's good. But for printing purposes, it will work. You can actually print the values using the print function. So in here, in this program, instead of writing this code, I could have written, anyways, let me just change that code to this one. So, uh, uh, so in here, please understand what that thing does. Okay? Try to go find out what that thing, why it works. Why I don't need to write an if statement and that works. Try to find out, okay? Pardon me? Anybody wants to, to try? Do you remember lazy evaluation? IPC 144. When, when a conditional statement happens, when the compiler reaches the result, it doesn't bother testing the rest. When I say I and, if I is zero, zero and anything is false. So the C out won't get executed. When I is non-zero, it's true. True and, it needs to test the other one to know what is the outcome. We don't care for the outcome. We want just this to get executed. For this to get evaluated, it has to get executed. Therefore, if I is not zero, that runs. This is much faster than an if statement. You see many people who do gaming, they want to write a quick if statement, they do it like this. Because there is no jump in here. There is no jump in here. Okay, so just, just FYI. But, so let's go back in here in dynamic. In here, if I wanted to print it, now that I've done that, I can actually remove this. Where is the, t the printing? To print, I, I could actually do, uh, do the print PRN array, and in here say integer const. So that's okay, const integer pointer a, so I cast that one, and I say a dot size. So that will print it, because constant integer passing constant int is good, there's no problem with it, okay? And the same thing for d over here, if I want to just print it, that is fine, I can go prn array const double pointer D and D dot size. That is just fine too. So that works. So if I run this, it will set and print it because uh, it just could, it, it, I give read only access to raw data. But if I want to sort that thing, then it's completely different. To sort it, I have to come in sorting. And just for my sort, I'm going to do this. First of all, I have to include dynamic array over here. That's number one. So I have to say include, because it needs to know what, what dynamic array is. Ugh, come on. Dynamic, ar dynamic array. So first that, OK? Then in here, I have to say template type. Where did I copy? Did I copy it here? Yeah. So I will leave it empty. And here, I'm going to make it dynamic array. OK? So I'm going to say, if you are sorting with a dynamic array, in here, I can pass actually a, a dynamic. Uh, so dynamic array pointer dptr. Pardon me? Uh, and in here, I have to put uh, Wow, that becomes tough. Too rich for our blood, forget it. That's 345. That's 345. 
I just wanted to do it, and then I realized I have to do something else and completely forget it. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, so that, Nah, never mind. It, it, it's something like this later on, but 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 never mind. Okay. You can you can do it, but you have to. It's 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 too rich for a birth. But this is good enough. This is good enough. So we can't sort it because we have to directly access it for sorting. Overload it. If you want to do it, overload the sorting. The problem is that you don't need to because uh, sorting. Uh, uh, you don't need the size for it, right? That size is moot because our dynamic array knows what is its size. So that's garbage. We don't we don't need that. So that's that. Anyways, that's the end of it. Let's save. So that's our dynamic array of anything. And uh, um, before we go, uh, like I don't know if anybody is as old as I am. Remember that. That that I, I mentioned this to all my to all my classes. It used to make sense at the time, but now it doesn't. Remember that commercial for Apple, like this. Um, what what do you call these Apple cell phones? Apple cell phone, right? iPhone, iPhone. Yeah. I never I've never used Apple in my life, so I just I, it's against my religion. So <laughs> I don't do. That. So these iPhones, like you remember that they was like they would see they to to tell that you have you can find any application on it. They would say, like, I want to do this account. There's an app for that. Anything that would say, they would say, there is an app for that. OK? And so on and so forth. OK? Yeah. So it was a commercial at the time, and everybody would laugh at it. And, you know, so so there, anything you want, there is an app for it. OK? Anything you want to do in C++, a major algorithm that you want to do, there is a template library for it. It's called SDR, Standard Template Library. Anything you want to do, you want to do sort an array, it's one there. You want to do a quick search, it's there. If you, you want to create a stack, it's there. You want to have a dynamic array, it's there. This is garbage. I, you don't need to. There is actually a standard type template library called array, exactly like this, that you add something, and it creates an efficient array for it. Not only that, you can create a vector that is resizable array. You can create many things that crazy and they all work together perfectly and not only that you can say i want this array to be sorted in a multi-threaded way which means it parallel processes the source thingy so it becomes 10 times faster you don't need to know how to do it you just use the standard template library that's three four five to learn how to use all those good stuff okay so anything you want and that's why, that's why when you're writing C++, knowing standard template library is not a, like lots of people say, no, I want to write a stack myself. Why? They have like geniuses wrote the best algorithm to create a stack for you. Why you want to create your own? Like you have extra time. You have clients waiting. You want to do something quickly. Why? It's like I used to be that macho guy. I, I always drive standard car. All my life, I had standard H with the clutch and everything. And in traffic, I had to do clutches. I, I, I don't. I know if you know what a standard car is. Like it's not automatic. You do standard manual shifting. I used to drive like that. But but you're in like like ten kilometers, bumper to bumper thing. You go with the clutch. Why are you crazy? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So. Um, Try, learn how to use the tools. Uh, they say a worker is as good as uh, the tools he knows how to use. Okay, it's the same thing with program. A programmer is as good as the knowledge of the language the person is using. Knowing the basics is easy. Every program's loops you'll understand. There's no problem with that. A good programmer knows that there are certain tools over there that you know that you don't even need to write a, a loop. Loops are in standard type template library. You do repetition much faster using the standard template library. OK, so remember that. That's it. We only have one more thing to go through, and then uh, uh, we are done. Um, 
We have six minutes. You want me to talk about uh, overview of polymorphism and be done with it? It's a very simple thing. Huh? We'll find out. I, either nothing will we'll sit at home or you want me to go through it? It's a very, it's a, it's a very, it's just knowledge, it's just buzzwords are telling you. It's, I'm just summarizing what you have learned down to this point. Okay. So, essentially, overview of polymorphism. When you are doing polymorphism, when you are talking about polymorphism, um, it's categorized in uh, in different type, in different things: ad hoc coercion, overloading, universal inclusion, parametric. Ad hoc means fake, okay? So the left side that you see is fake polymorphism, which means when you look at it closely, it's not really polymorphism. Coercion, casting. When you do casting, like when you, the sum that I wrote, and I ran it with a double, it worked with an integer. I didn't need to overload it. It would draw, of course, it would drop the partial parts, but it would still work. Was that polymorphism? No. When you look at it closely, it's just casting, okay? Overloading. You overload a function with new type, with new types. You are not, the, 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 so when the compiler is compiling, it literally attaches the names of the types to the name. So when you create a sum for an int and an int, and a sum and a double double, the first one is called sum int int, the second one is called sum double double. They are not same name. So it's, again, fake. It's not real. That's overloading. Inclusion, however, it is real polymorphism. That's virtual functions. The functions are identical. The uh, signature is identical. Everything is identical. Based on the type, automatically it searches and finds the best version and runs that one. That's polymorphism. So. Same things that we have done with motorcycles and vehicles. So when you park a motorcycle, you, you get a motorcycle, you get a, uh, you get a car, and each one has its own right that does it automatically when the time comes. You have a vehicle, you say, vehicle, write yourself. And automatically, if it's a motorcycle, a motorcycle will write itself. If it's a car, a car will write itself. That's perfect polymorphism. That is called inclusion polymorphism. Parametric polymorphism is what we learned today. That's like the mother of all polymorphism. You don't even have a function. You just write the idea of a function, and based on the need, compiler will generate the code for you. That's absolute polymorphism. Done. Told you. OK? I told you, it's an overview, just teaching you what we learned throughout the semester, and that's it. So again, remember, ad hoc fake polymorphism, OK? Polymorphism, but they say, closer scrutiny, you've got to find out that it's not. So when you look at it closely, you see it's not. Uh, universal are polymorphism that are actually polymorphism. So it, what is inclusion is based on the type and its owner, and parametric is the one that you write a template, and the template uh, generates the code, and that's that one. And uh, the other thing, input and output refinements, ladies and gentlemen. Probably next time you come and we can, I'll go through it. I'll go through it and see what it is. You know how the ignore works? <laughs> so these are the ignore, get, get line. You know all these things. We've talked about all these things. So, so uh, with, fill, set, F, onset, F, precision. These are, these are the things. And... Uh, um, and it talks about manipulators that are, I think, uh, optional. There you go. So the ones that are optional are manipulators that you don't know. The rest of them, we worked on them. And Fstream, everything, we worked on it thoroughly. So there's nothing to teach. Go through it. If you see if there is any question, let me know. Are we good? So this is officially the end of the semester. We have no more classes. OK? Uh, yeah, we don't need to. I'll be, be online if you have any question. Please, oh, something that I have to uh, tell you that is extremely important. I, I, did I mention how to book appointment using Microsoft Teams? Did I show it to you? Please do that, OK? Book an appointment when I'm available. And please don't wait three hours before the deadline of a, of a project before you call me for help, OK? Ask now.
Okay? We sit together. I have time. We sit together and we work on it. Okay? So, book an appointment. I'll, I'll take a look, make sure that I'm following the... Um, you know when your test is, right? I don't need to mention it. We already mentioned it. Here? Why do I have to come? You want me? Do you want to come? No, I'm asking. No? No, I don't need to because everything's finished. Like, what do I do? I'll come over here, teach more, look at each other. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Half peanut butter cookies. 